Now, the Center for Plant Medicine Research, CPMR, has spoken on the use of these local bitters as hand sanitizers, and they are saying, following the outbreak of COVID-19 coronavirus in Ghana in recent days, and the collective efforts of government and the people of Ghana in dealing with the disease, CPMR is concerned about social media postings alleging that alcoholic bitters could be a substitute for hand sanitizers in seeking to prevent the coronavirus infections. Now, they go on to say that for a sanitizer to be effective in ridding the hands of coronavirus, they must have 60 to 95 percent alcohol by volume, and that alcohol content for the bitters on the market is often less than 45 percent. Thus, clearly, such bitters and their alcohol content are inadequate as a sterilizing measure against COVID-19. They go on to say that no known medical plant or herbal product or local gin has at yet, as yet, pardon me, uh, been proven to be efficacious against COVID-19. They go on to say that as a center of excellence in research, they are engaging with various partners and stakeholders, including the Ministry of Health and traditional medicine practitioners to explore research opportunities in the fight against COVID-19 using herbal medicine. So the statement ends with a set of guidelines which um, has been put out previously by the Ministry of Health, who put it out again, frequent cleaning of hands with soap under running water, or the use of alcohol-based sanitizers, covering cough with a bend of the elbow or tissue paper, maintaining a distance of at least one meter from people coughing or sneezing, regular physical activities, regular intake of water, and lastly, ensuring personal hygiene. It's signed by the Head of Public Relations at the Center, Bafo Ose Akoto. Now, still on the COVID-19 outbreak, the minority in Parliament is demanding that government immediately fixes water and electricity challenges facing the country if it's serious about preventing a spread of the coronavirus. Former Deputy Minister for Water Resources, Sam Sine, he wants Ghana Water Company Limited to immediately open the Teshi Water Desalination Plants to bring in 60,000 cubic meters of water daily to normalize supply. He warns lack of water could make curbing the spread of the virus impossible. Joseph Opokugako joins us live now. Joe, when did uh, the former deputy minister say this? Was this in the plenary, in contributing to a debate, or he was speaking to journalists? Uh, speaking to journalists himself and the ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee, I have been trying to make a case to pile pressure on government to a certain extent to help deal with the challenges of water and also electricity that's facing broadly. Something he makes the point that this is a standby plan, speaking of the station desalination plan that a lot of money had actually been invested in, and that looking at the fact that government is ready to commit 100 million US dollars to deal with the issue of the coronavirus. To a certain extent, even in the light of concern that this particular plan produced water that's more expensive, and that's something that the Ghana Water Company is difficult to pay for, portions of those allocations should be made so that then it would help. Uh, improve water supply in Accra. And the ranking member on the Energy Committee, Adam Mutawakilu, says it's about time that a timetable is mm. published with regards to the power crisis and that as far as he's concerned, not just the one of them. Joseph. Daniel. Great. Um, has this argument made it on the floor of Parliament? Has Parliament as an institution for instance, spoken about the uh, low water and electricity supply? It's not an issue that has come up on the floor of the House. What is that? We understand that today emergency legislation should make it to the floor uh, to deal with the sweeping measures that the President announced uh, on Sunday concerning this coronavirus. Um, has that legislation made it on the floor? What's the latest we know about that? Not yet, but again, we gather that that is something that will uh, definitely happen in the course of this afternoon. Thank you very much, Joseph Opoku Gapo. We'll come back to you when we have more on that. Glad you could join us in our first story. The Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology was deserted Monday. It follows the president's directive Sunday nights for schools to be shut down over the coronavirus outbreak. Joy News' Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin has been finding out what it means to some of the students who are still on campus. 
first year Enfield student Bruce Christopher Konu Bruce had been preparing to end his last semester and prepare for his thesis. We met Bruce on campus working on his projects. He says going home is not an option for him. Uh, for me, going home is not an option now. Like, I just have to stay behind and continue working on my projects. Because already some of the projects, we have um, a delay in some of the projects that I'm working on because of the outbreak in general, you know, so and now that um, China, like the kind of things we import, you know, and then there is so much delay in them. Now, so if that four weeks, I think going home is not an option for me. I have yeah, to stay and then keep working on my projects. I don't, I'm not going home. Bruce says the directive by the government had been long overdue. It's closing down the school. It's one of the best decisions that the president has taken. Because of um, the way it, things are going, I think that's one of the best decisions. But then I, I, I wish, um, you know, other countries also did the same thing. They closed down their school, but there were systems that were in place. I mean, for countries like advanced countries like Italy, U.S., they've closed down institutions, but there is, um, all, there were other alternatives provided. Like, I'm not worried because schools are closed down to contain the spread of the virus, but it's because we don't have such system. You no, know? it's not everybody has internet as as well as they are at home. I mean, it, it's it's good for some people, but not every not not even every student have that kind of maybe online video conferencing facility. And it's it's a genuine excuse. So, so. Have you been speaking to your friends? I mean, your colleague students who who are also here. What are they saying? Ah, uh, it's a kind of like mixed feelings. Some people wanted to go home, and some people are already like packed and going. So. It's just something I can't explain. Everybody have their own um, view of it. Some of them, they welcome it as a good news. Going home is like as, as a good news, but some of them are also not happy about it. You can see some of them are still around. Have you heard from your family? Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been in uh, constant contact with my family back home and um, uh, they are also aware of the virus outbreak, you know, so they are also taking the necessary precaution to avoid contacting them. They've also heard that the school has been closed down. Are they asking you to come home? Yeah, my mom was asking me to come home when I she, she was asking when am I coming home. So and my my brothers, so many people are concerned. Like come home, come home, come home. Like, A Ghanaian architect alleged to be involved in a plot masterminded by some Russians to meddle in the upcoming elections in the USA has been charged with money laundering. Seth Redu was mentioned in a CNN investigative piece to be using social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, including ones called woke blacks and blacktivists to urge Americans to vote for third party candidates or sit out the election entirely. Court correspondent Joseph Akable was in court as state prosecutors pressed charges. He joins us with more. Now, Joseph, what's the state's case against Seth Reid? We know that initially he was said to be tampering with an election. Where does money laundering come in? And so, uh, in simple terms, money laundering relates to uh, you having money that uh, you are unable to explain that is believed to have been of crime. And so the point by the prosecutors is to the effect that uh, this is money that uh, they realized from his phone record that he had transferred into the country, but he has still to explain uh, the basis or how he obtained those monies. He has not shown that he engaged in any employment that he, that he obtained those monies as services he provided or as whatever work he did for which he obtained the money. And so they believe that uh, it's a cyber crime which they have been investigating him for uh, since December that led him to obtaining two amounts of money, for which reason uh, they have brought this case against him. But what is important to note is that in terms of the complainant in this matter, who is alleging that he has committed a crime, we, we understand it's a security operative. 
who are, is the complainant who has asked. Uh, Pardon me, Joseph, we lost you there. You said who is the complainant? We are told the complainant is the National Security Operative mm. who has been leading the task force that has been investigating him since December 2019 till now. And they said that they have been trailing him and they realized that he's been engaged in cyber activities that are contrary to the laws of the country. But for now, the study leveled against him relates to the amount of 82,000 cities which they say were ill gotten for which we say they've charged him with money laundering. What explanation did Seth give for possessing this cash, or has it not gotten to that point yet? It's not gotten to that point yet. In fact, the point the lawyers made at this stage was that it's too early, and so they wanted uh, that he be granted bail uh, so that he goes pending uh, the, the, the case being continued subsequently. His plea was not taken either. It's worthwhile to note that the court also uh, took into consideration a directive that has come from the chief justice related to uh, they need to try as much as possible not to remand persons into the custody of the police once they are charged and uh, just to ensure that you don't have too many people crowded in the prison right area of the COVID-19 so that was complied he was granted bail as well okay so he was granted bail yes now you just mentioned COVID-19 and we know that the CJ has issued some directive regarding um, the situation how are these directives being enforced and so inside the court we Hello, Joseph, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Great. Um, how are these directives being enforced? And so inside the court, the judges are making a conscious effort. If I, one of the cases that I start to do, uh, the judge actually asks the accused person whether uh, he prefers the bill or he prefers to remain in custody. And the point the judge was making was that if he's in the custody and there's uh, the outbreak of the COVID in the custody, it will be very dangerous. And so the judge immediately granted him bail. The only concern is that the sanitizers that were provided at the entrance of the court, I went to the law court complex as well as the circuit court, they don't have sanitizers at the entrance. And then again, uh, what is being done at the circuit court is that people are not being allowed into the court mm -hmm. unless you are party to the case. And so if you are an accused person or you are a lawyer or you are a prosecutor, you'll be allowed in. But the public is not being allowed into the courtroom to witness the proceedings. And so in the case that we just spoke about shortly, I was not allowed into the courtroom. Right. Unfortunately, we seem to have lost Joseph Akabli there. The phone lines failed us. Thank you, anyway, Joseph, for giving us that picture of what happened in court today. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Now, many traders in Kumase have switched businesses to cash in on coronavirus prevention items, which are in high demand from sanitizers, hand gloves, and nose masks, the central market and other busy streets have been taken over by petty traders selling one item or the other. Prince Apia visited some commercial hubs to monitor the situation in our reports. One thing we've observed is the business booming around those selling hand gloves and sanitizers. And most of them are petty traders. <laughs> The business is good. We feel that disease leaves us. I used to do don't call me before I switched to selling gloves. We sell at one city. Others are selling at three cities. And my bad news is that I was so be up on home buying. It was announced that we protect ourselves. That is why I am selling these items. A pair of hand gloves is three CDs and a nose mask is five CDs. I'm a Now, I am a bread seller, but this business is good for now. So when everything is over, I sell for a week more, then I revert to selling bread. I have sold 10 boxes of sanitizers and a nose mask today. It is difficult, but we are trying hard to protect ourselves. For us to lapia sellers, 
We prefer using sanitizers to wearing the gloves because it gets torn easily. We wrap the neck with a special sanitizer, so we try not to allow the sweat of the customer to get onto the material we use. For them, they're excited about the business boom, but of course they pray that this particular disease or infection gets out of our country. My name is Prince Apia reporting from Kumasi. Well, staying in Kumasi, Africa Company Limited has opened a new showroom to serve customers and clients in the northern sector of the country. Officials of the decor and furnishing firm say its presence in the Ashanti region is part of a long-term plan to bring products and services closer to users. Owner of Africa spoke to Joy News at the ceremony. Uh, in short, I just want to introduce our new company. Actually, uh, is a we are a couple of companies uh, working under the name of Africa uh, to deal with everything concerning building material. So it's just a start. We start with some uh, items. Let's start, let's say, from tiles to gypsum boards to uh, lighting to AC and more to come. I promise Kumasi that uh, more to come. Anything related to your uh, construction or to your building you are, uh, you are going to find in uh, Africa. So uh, you are welcome again in Africa and I hope this business will grow with your support. Africa and its uh, partners also provide natural stone fabrications produced locally. Partner and chief executive of the Stone Depot Elias Haig says uh, some of the products of international standard are made from local materials. Africa has given us the opportunity for us um, to distribute our products uh, here in Kumasi, making it readily available to everybody. Um, we are a natural stone fabrication uh, company. Uh, we deal in marble, granite and engineered quartz. Our factory is in Accra and currently uh, we serve we serve all the regions in Ghana, but the concentration has really been on the greater Accra region. So f this time, what we want to do is concentrate a little bit on, on Kumasi, thereby making our products available. Um, we'll do uh, material availability, service availability, so there will be installation. Uh, all our products are made in Ghana. Uh, we buy large slabs of marble and we fabricate kitchen shops. Uh, kitchen tops, sorry, we have kitchen tops, staircases, bathroom vanities, um, we do a lot of flooring, we do wall cladding, we do some tombs, altars, uh, there's a lot of design work that we do with stone. Uh. And that's it for business for now. We have more coming up at 1 o'clock on the Marketplace with Emmanuel Abwadiri. My name is Daryl Kwao. News today continues with sports. Stay tuned. Well, uh, thanks for staying with us here on Joy News. Today it's time for sport and we've got a breaking news story. The Euro 2020 tournament has been postponed and this is um, according to the uh, Norwegian uh, FA. Now this uh, just indicates that the Euro 2020 tournament has been postponed by one year until 2021 because of the coronavirus pandemic and this is according to the Norwegian FA. So there will be more on this uh, breaking news story on sports today. Well, still on the coronavirus, and the Ghana Athletics Federation has suspended all activities after government's ban on public gatherings. Here is Secretary of the Association, Bafusaini. I think the, um, it's an understatement, you know, because this pandemic, coronavirus pandemic, is a serious thing that the government has taken, and we also have taken it seriously upon ourselves to safeguard our athletes, to safeguard our coaches, and to safeguard our membership. So it affects seriously our competitions, our preparation, our Olympic qualifiers have all been affected. And there's very little we can do but just to adhere to what the government and international federation have access to do. The negatives are that we will not be able to compete. 
athletes will continue to train, but they will not have competition. That is something that is worrisome, but it's also a necessary thing that we, we avoid competing among ourselves or gathering more than 25 people or even large crowd places. So it, it will affect us, but we just have to do with what the situation demands for us, for us now. So we ask athletes to continue training, and we are praying that within a month, the situation will not rise. Then we'll come back to our competitions to see what God has in for us to, in the term of qualifying to the Olympic Games, or to continue with our preparation and our program throughout the year. And finally, Arsene Wenger and Jose Mourinho, as well as Gianni Infantino, are, member, are among big names leading FIFA, uh, FIFA instruction video on protection against the coronavirus. Hello there, good afternoon, welcome to show this year on Joy News today. Now, a pastor has revealed to rapper E.L. that God is planning to honor him later this year. According to Professor Mr. Martin of House of Miracles Church, E.L. is, quote, pregnant with ideas, unquote. But uh, he is unable to execute them mainly because of some obstacles. He said the obstacles around the rapper are disguise uh, themselves as his friends and well-wishers. Take a listen. The, 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 the guy, the, the, the Rastafarian guy, yes, the one, yes, stand up. Yes, the hand of God is on your life. Serious. The hand of God is on your life. I see greatness on you. I see greatness. It needs to manifest. Everybody around you thinks everything's okay, but there's that a day woman in MPA. It's about to come out more because what will confirm is when you are there you know that mm, people think i'm this but there, there, there are more things that are covered when you are there privately the thing will talk to you like that it's like you are pregnant with a lot of ideas god said in the year 2020 from september god is going to honor you I see estates, I see great, I see, you know what, it's so big, because this gentleman, you, you just laugh people for no reason, but the issue is your resource is minimal, when people see you, they think everything, but what I'm seeing is, I say, you're covered with me, you're covered, and no man will move too much, you'll be great, and nobody can bring you down, I see greatness on you. I see everywhere. I'm not talking about just being celebrated in Ghana, but you'll be celebrated beyond the borders of Ghana. You become a global champion. That when people hear your name, but God said I should deal with some snakes. Any snake around you who shows as if he or she loves you too much, may God disconnect you from them. You know what? God begin to bless you when relevant men meet you. May you meet your relevant men. You don't need regular people. You need a relevant man. Away from that, Deputy Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Dr. Zablim Idi Barry says the Memphis in May Festival once again offers Ghana an opportunity to uh, permeate the African American, just like the Beyond the Return initiative speaking at a press conference to officially launch the 44th edition of the month-long festival he stated it will also offer Ghana uh, Ghanaian investors the opportunity to network and create business partnerships for our musicians for our cultural you know, tools that we're going to display uh, but most importantly it offers us a bigger opportunity for a Ghanaian contingent to network and interact one of the pillars of the beyond the return that the president lands, we have seven the pillars. The first one is investment. And I believe that for 30 days, if we go out with the Chamber of Ghanaian Commerce and other Ghanaian businessmen, they will network and they will create business partnerships. And that will bring a lot. Uh, for us at the Ministry of Tourism, if 2019 is something to go by, this again will offer another opportunity to bring through the African American market and bring traffic towards Ghana. And so that Ghana will continue to be the preferred destination for African Americans.
That will be all for Showbiz here on Joy News Today, the small Showbiz in our subsequent bulletins. Hello to you, Daniel. Hi, Becky. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. It's like this? Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I understand we're not supposed to do that. You know, yeah, because some people cough into the inside of their elbows. Okay. But the argument is also that there's hardly any contact between your elbows and your face. Yeah, so that's what some medical professionals say. But it's sure. good to be careful. Please make sure you are not touching your face, especially with your hands. Make sure you are keeping a good social distance, at least a meter or two, and wash your hands regularly. Stay safe from COVID-19. This has been Joy News Today. My name is Daniel Daji. Thank you for the show this end. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. We'll be back tomorrow with another journeys today. Up next, though, is the marketplace. Have a good day.